Across the world, our wildlife is facing a multitude of threats, from the largest species to the smallest. And the UK is no exception. An iconic species made famous from the Wind in the Willows storybook as the character Ratty, the water vole, is in serious trouble. Once found across the UK, it's estimated that in recent years, the water vole has disappeared from 90% of its previous range. This fast and sudden decline has made it one of our rarest mammals here in the UK. But here in Devon, a group of ecologists are aiming to reverse that decline and bring the water vole back from the brink of extinction. We've come to the Derek Gow Consultancy here in Devon to see exactly what the team are doing to give the water vole a fighting chance. And it's not long after we've arrived that we're greeted by some fluffy little faces. This is Jenny Tratt, who is the animal manager here on site. And we want to find out what they do here at the consultancy and just how important these little mammals are. So tell us a little bit about the work you do here with the water voles. So we breed the water voles, we'll go onto different sites and we'll trap them if they're trying to do construction work and obviously the water voles aren't allowed to be there anymore and then we bring them back to site here and we'll breed them and then we'll release them onto sites so they can be free. How many voles do you have in here at the moment? So we roughly have between 400 and 500 voles in here at the moment and they're just being temporarily housed whilst we're waiting for release. It's quite a lot of voles in one barn. Where have they all come from? We breed them here on site. We use a breeding stock that we've had here for years. We keep using them and then we also trap from different sites and they're used to be bred to go back to the receptor habitats that they make for them. Water voles are vegetarian and in the wild they have been found to eat over 200 different plant species. And here the team try to give them all of their dietary needs. We release all over the country really. Some of these will be going up as far as Chester, some will be going to Wales, some will be going to London. It just depends where the release sites are for this year. The team have to assess each water vole on a daily basis to ensure they are putting on sufficient weight to be released. Water voles need to eat 80% of their body weight each day. And over the years the breeding programme has been running, the team have worked out the exact diet for them. So you've got a water vole in here? Yeah, so there's actually there's two water voles in here and we're just going to get them out and weigh them and give them a general health check really. Holding the water vole gently by their tail ensures that they stay still and don't panic. This means the team can carry out all necessary health checks causing minimal stress to the animal. So he is now 180 grams. And he was 170, so he's gained 10 grams, which is nice. And that's what we want. Yeah, we definitely, want definitely. So in the, the bigger cages, there can be up to six voles in here. So these guys are out and really active, as you can see, oh waiting God. to be fed. <laughs> Why do you keep them all together like that? So these are in sibling groups. We'd never mix them with a different family because they're really territorial. So they, they would just try and kill each other basically. So yeah, they stay in sibling groups. And then we just, we basically bring them in here as a bit of temporary housing. And then we sort them all out and get them ready and then they go on release. So these guys will be released within the next month. The water vole families are only kept in these pens for a short time before they are taken to a release site. It is incredibly important that they have put on enough weight before they head out into the wild. And the team work round the clock to ensure they are in tip-top condition. And of course, water voles have undergone a mammoth decline across the UK. What are the main threats affecting them? Most of it is habitat destruction, really. People are obviously building a lot of houses. That's using a lot of the land that these guys would be living in. And also we've got predators. So uh, the American mink really didn't help these guys from about the 1970s onwards. They can quite happily wipe out a water vole population if you get a female mink in the ditch system where they are. Despite their relatively small size, water voles are an important species of freshwater systems as they create micro habitats for other species. They create burrow systems in the sides of riverbanks. This dries out the surrounding soil, 
and helps regulate nitrogen, a vital nutrient for plant growth. And what are the main signs if you think you've got water voles living near you? What, what signs can people look out for? You might hear everybody say as you walk past the water, you might hear the plop as they jump in the water. If you really want to get in and part the vegetation, you might see burrows or you might see feeding signs. So they eat shoots and grasses and things and it's always at a 45 degree angle and you'll find that in little piles or you may find signs of droppings which will be in piles as well. Water voles excavate extensive burrow networks in the side of riverbanks. And these burrows aren't only used by the water vole, but also by other species and are a vital part of the ecosystem. And little do they know it, but these water voles right here are amongst some of the most important creatures in the UK. And why is the conservation of water voles so important? If we're not here um, breeding them to release them, the whole population would go extinct. Um, Derek's played a massive part in that. And yes, we, we need them here really so they can feed other animals, they're bottom of the food chain. So yeah, it's helping other animals as well as themselves really. Not only is the water vole a bit of an iconic mammal here in the UK, but now it's a bit of a myth. A species written about in storybooks all those years ago, you now have to be incredibly lucky to see one in the wild. And I really hope that thanks to groups like this, landowners and the general public, that the water vole does make a comeback, as wouldn't it be lovely to see these little faces in our waterways once more. <laughs>